Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how the skin ages and what the factors are that accelerate skin aging. But before we get into it, take a moment to subscribe to the channel so that you can get more of these videos. We're gonna have a whole series on skin and it's gonna be really, really informational and helpful. And uh, at the end of it, if you like it, make sure you, uh, you, you press like so we can get more and more people to look at it. All right, so let's launch into the concept of skin. And this is a very complicated uh, topic that really should be a lot more simple than it, it is and what it seems. So I'm gonna take a moment to really make it a very understandable, very easily to digest topic, which I believe you are gonna benefit from because you're gonna put everything that goes into how to manage your skin in context of what we're about to discuss. So this is the foundation of your knowledge what we're about to go into. So before we go into the factors, let's talk a little bit about the skin and skin anatomy. So this facial skin specifically is what we're gonna chat about is composed of two primary layers. The first layer is the epidermis, which is the, the top layer of the skin. And then there's the dermis, which is the middle portion of the skin and down to the, the, the base of the skin. When you put those two layers together, at different ages, you have different ratios of thickness. When you're younger, what you have is a relatively thin and smooth epidermis. And the, uh, one layer on top of the epidermis is called the stratum corneum, which is, the, is basically a layer of very thin, uh, avascular, non-living tissue. And that gives the skin its waterproofing, gives its skin its, its uh, uh, overall durability. But what it does is it allows a lot of light to come through when it's thin. The second layer, the dermis, when you're young, is nice and full. It's a big, thick layer of, of skin. That's what gives the skin that suppleness, that brightness, that thickness. And what happens with age is we start to see a reversal of those two things. So keep in mind, epidermis is relatively thin when you're young, and dermis is relatively thick when you're young. And starting in our 20s and 30s, there is a decrease in the production of collagen and elastin. These are things that make up the, the foundation of the dermis. That's what we see when we look under a microscope. We see the uh, collagen fibers laying in there. We see fibroblasts, which are cells that make collagen, working functionally and creating a lot of, of collagen. And then we see the matrix being held together with elastin. Now what's important about elastin is, it's what gives the skin its ability to recoil. So when you pull the skin up and you snap it back, there is a, there is a pullback effect and that's from the elastin. Now what happens with age is elastin begins to decrease, collagen production begins to decrease as the fibroblasts become less and less productive and overall the dermis becomes thinner. Now what's happening on the epidermal side is the epidermis becomes weaker, you start to see lines and wrinkles forming in the surface, but also the layer of that stratum corneum, we said there was a kind of non-living tissue. I always think of it as the, the uh, top of an onion, you know, that, that uh, dull layer of an onion. That becomes thicker and thicker. So as a result, skin looks more dull because light is unable to reflect off of it as that happens. Now, when you take that, that uh, evolution of the, of the skin aging and you understand the fact that it's changing over time, that gives us an idea of what exactly we need to do if we're trying to address it. And that's gonna come in later discussions. But for now, let's talk a little bit about specifically what are our targets in skincare and how we can address these changes. So number one, a general strategy is always to exfoliate. So what are we exfoliating in, in treatment? We're exfoliating that stratum corneum. We're taking off that dead layer of skin. We're taking off certain layers of the, of the epidermis. And that removal of that, of that layer gives the skin the opportunity to shine bright. That quality is called luminosity. It's the reflection of the light off of the skin. And it's really one of the oldest and most notable qualities of young, beautiful skin. If you look at Renaissance paintings and, and all these uh, you know, signs and, and uh, things of beauty, you see that that's always a constant, is that bright porcelain light reflective quality to the skin. So that comes from shedding off that epidermal and stratum corneum. What you wanna target 
is also the dermis. Remember we said the dermis is thinning, it's getting smaller and smaller, and as a result of that loss of thickness, that dermis becomes weaker, and every movement of the face starts to leave an impression on the skin, if the skin folds more as it gets thinner. And that's because those fibroblasts stop making the collagen, stop really producing. So what we wanna do is we wanna create a situation where we tell this fibroblast in the skin to in fact produce collagen. So how can we do that? The number one way is to basically injure the skin. Because remember when you make create an injury, and it sounds like a bad word, but in this case it's a, a very positive thing if we're doing it in a controlled way, what happens is the injury sends a signal to those cells in the, in the uh, dermis that says, hey, we just got a little, uh, you know, we got a little injury, a little violation of our epidermis. We need to build more collagen to heal it because that's how the tissue heals. It heals by production of collagen. That's exactly what a scar is. When you cut your, your skin, your skin heals with a scar. A scar is collagen. But we're not creating a wound that is gonna leave a scar, but we are creating a micro wound that's gonna create a cascade of events that lead to more collagen production. That's a very, very important part of anti-aging of the skin and keeping that, that dermis getting thicker. So how do we do that? Basically, controlled uh, injuries from chemical peels, from lasers, from mechanical things like needling, uh, microdermabrasion, something that's gonna basically create enough of a signal producing injury that would then lead to it, but not such a significant injury that leaves you with a physical scar. So that's the, that's the overall context. And then what we do when we control the skin aging in this way is, is we basically maintain that relationship that we had when we were younger. We had that thinner epidermis, thicker dermis. If you're lucky enough to be hearing this video and start doing some of the things that we're gonna talk about you know, early in the process, you're gonna keep that relationship with you for the rest of your life, you truly can. But if you're older and your skin has already gone through some of these changes, well, the targets are gonna be, we're gonna get in there and we're gonna shed the epidermis, exfoliate this treatment with some type of resurfacing, and then we're going to present the type of injuries on a regular enough basis, on a repetitive enough basis, call it every six weeks or 10 weeks, that is gonna give the, the skin an opportunity to consistently build collagen over time. And with that, we're gonna see our dermis get go from being thin to thicker, 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 thicker over time. So those are the primary ways of structurally addressing aging of the skin. And if we do the things that we'll talk about in subsequent videos in the right way, we can do it in a very efficient, very effective, and generally speaking, a very cost-effective way. And we'll also discuss how we can bring in products and certain properties of products to help us in this as well as some of the things that we can do to our environment to help reduce and decelerate the process of aging. So that pretty much sums up the anatomy and how the skin ages and some of the factors that we're gonna think about in a, in a big picture way to address skin aging going forward and give you the framework for you to understand whenever you, you hear about a new treatment or a new cream or a new procedure, where does that fit into the strategy? And if it fits in well, well then you have a good potential treatment. If it doesn't fit in well, it doesn't make sense, then it's probably something that's you know smoke and mirrors and more marketing hype than, than actual efficacy and not worth your time and money. So I hope you found this uh, uh, this uh, discussion interesting and helpful. Um, again, please uh, subscribe to the channel because there's a lot more good information coming your way, as well as take a moment to not only like the video if you if you felt, comment on any questions that you have or, or thoughts on it, but also forward it to any of your uh, friends and family who might find this information easier. My goal is to simplify and make a complex topic very easy so that you can get that youthful and beautiful skin in the long run. I hope this helped. Thanks so much.